With over 600,000 reported deaths from COVID-19, we might think that the worst of this disease is over. But what if I told you that the subsequent aftershock of this disease might be the most insidious of them all? And what does that mean for you and your family's health? We answer that in today's video. All right, so let's answer one fundamental question. What the heck does autoimmune disease have anything to do with you getting COVID-19? That should be what you're wondering, and that's what I'm gonna answer. So let's unpack it. Let's take away the word COVID-19, and let's just think virus. And then let's look at autoimmune disease and understand that there's so many of them, right? So we don't give it a name. We're just gonna talk about viruses and autoimmunity first to help better give a basic understanding to the complexity of what I'm trying to share with you today. So here's this first study posted in uh, the journal Viruses. And, it's, and what it's doing is it's looking at the connection between viruses and autoimmunity. And as it shows here, it says, for a long time, viruses have been shown to modify the clinical picture of several autoimmune diseases, particularly type 1 diabetes, lupus, um, RA, uh, celiacs and, and MS and others just like that. So basically uh, what it's, it's looking at and what's well known and what's come into light over the last 10 years in particular is that there's this really strong connect connection between viruses and autoimmunity. Well, how is that possible? So let's, let's dial it back. Let's talk about a virus and how it works. And this will help a lot. So a virus in and of itself invades the host cell right, implants its um, basically instructions for how to make more of it. Think of just like an instructions you would read from Ikea um, to make uh, a shelf. So it, it implants that into the nucleus. And so now the, the cell gets confused and starts reproducing more virus, right? So the body in response will make antibodies to go after the virus. However, it is your body, it is your own cells making the virus. Okay, so that's viruses. Now let's look at autoimmunity. Let's, let's take a broad look. Currently in the United States, up to 25 million people suffer from some form of autoimmune disorder. You, you would think that maybe autoimmune disorder would describe one thing, it doesn't. In fact, there's so many different autoimmune disorders, they're still being discovered all the time. There's 90 up today of identified autoimmune disorders. So you could have all kinds of different autoimmune disorders. And how do they work? Well, essentially your immune system gets confused information and starts making an irregular protein. And that protein basically has the instructions to make an antigen or a white blood cell or an antibody in this case that starts attacking your own cells. It could be uh, organs or tissue. So again, Think about what I'm saying. There's 90 different variations of antibodies that then can be created that attack your body. And then you've got a virus that is also using your own cells to create more virus and your body has to make an antigen to go after that virus inside the cell. So in, in both scenarios, this is important, in both scenarios, it's technically yourself attacking you. And that'll help start bringing in the relationship to how these things are, are semi-related and how it all ties in together. So, okay, so now we understand uh, a little bit about both components. So let's look back at this data. And as you'll see here, uh, it, it, it goes over many different actual studies. And in one study, it noticed, it looked at the viruses Borna, IAV, measles, mumps, and rubella. Okay, these are, these are classic viruses. In the comparison to human uh, proteome revealed an unexpected massive viral human peptide cross reactivity. Okay, so what did that mean? Okay, well, let's look a little further. Importantly, the clinical implication of this high viral human peptide sequence similarly confirms the significance of molecular mimicry as the mechanism in viral induced autoimmunity. What it's saying here is that the full picture of how a virus creates an autoimmune disease is actually not fully understood 
And that's why, why a lot of research isn't done here because they can't understand the mechanisms of action. So this is actually something that is not covered enough, which is why we're doing it today. And since they can't explain the mechanisms of action, there's not a lot of studies on it. But they see that there's a huge causal relationship between the two. And what it has to do with is this, once the body all right, is infected with a virus, you're making this antigen to go after the virus and it's creating this human peptide sequence, which is the code to create antibodies that turn around and attack you. So that's how this is, there's a relationship happening there. And that relationship is growing and the concern is growing because autoimmune diseases are radically growing in the United States. As I said before, up to 25 million people now have some form of autoimmune disease. So now that we understand there's a relationship between viruses and autoimmune disease, let's look at COVID-19 in particular and say, okay, since different viruses induce different peptides that attack our body or create different antibodies, what antibodies do the SARS-CoV-19 infection induce? Well, this research um, published in August of 2020 uh, looked to, to talk about just that. So here we're looking at potential antigenic cross-reactivity between SARS and human tissue autoimmune diseases. And as it says here, this is where it gets fascinating, guys. So in my own clinical experience, the reason I even got on this topic at all was we are seeing lots of women that have no autoimmune disease get COVID and then come down with all these weird random conditions, joint pain, rashes, hiving, all kinds of different stuff, which prompts us to do an autoimmune panel. And many of the, the um, panels studied in this research is also what we look at at my company, Nutrition Dynamic. And we started looking and all of a sudden, we started seeing ANA uh, autoimmune antibodies popping up left and right in people that had never had an autoimmune disease before. So it prompted me to look further in this and that's the same thing that this research is saying. So down here it talks about, they were looking at, these researchers were looking at five different blood specimens, just five, that were confirmed positive uh, for COVID. And then they measured the ANA, ENA, which looks at uh, mixed connective tissue disorder and, and others, a like rheumatoid factor and the like. And it found that they were really surprised. Three out of the five specimens, that's a lot. That's damn near 60, 70% had a significant elevation in ANA and ENA. Again, these are tissue-based autoimmune disorders. This is exactly what I'm seeing in my practice, which is why this information is so important and why we're trying to get it to you. So as the research goes further, uh, let's take a look at this um, graph, and particularly the graph on the left. What it's showing here is the reaction of SARS, the spike protein, which is what they have in the vaccine, by the way. So what is the response by the immune system? Well, the immune system in response to a uh, virus will make antigens, right? And as you can see here, the one that's highest shows that the COVID-19 antigen in response to getting the virus is the highest, okay? Because it's going after the virus. But in a stunning and astonishing uh, revelation, look at all the different tissue-based antigens that it spiked. So th essentially in the immune system in going after COVID-19 also raised all these different antigens inside the human body that was tested. They looked further at way more different samples and they found, oh my gosh, mixed connective tissue, lupus, uh, to just name a few, uh, those antigens gained dramatically while somebody was sick with COVID-19 and then long after, which pauses for really big concern for the average human being just walking around who got COVID-19. So it says here that there was an overlap in immune cross-reactivity with the anti-spike protein antibody, particularly the spike protein. Again, that's also in the vaccine. So what, what, what are the implications here? Essentially what I'm telling you and what they're seeing is that there is a high rate of incidence related to people who get COVID-19 
and then now make antibodies attacking different cells or organ systems in people's bodies. Now, the brevity or the number of people impacted or, or, or how long this will take to actually manifest into a disease that you'll feel, because just because you're making antibodies doesn't mean you're going to feel it right away. And, and, and that's what I want to get to next. So you might think, well, I had COVID-19. Um, sure, I was sick, but I didn't have nothing crazy, so I must be fine, right? Well, not so fast. Uh, because what this is showing us is that people with autoimmune diseases or that get autoimmune diseases aren't necessarily presenting with really bad symptoms. So that's what this data here is. If you take a look here, it uh, looks at the association between severe or death of COVID-19 with autoimmune diseases, right? And as it goes on, it shows here, uh, it looked at a large sample of people who suffered with autoimmune diseases and said, were they at more risk of a severe reactions or to a mortality? And what the study says is, our study showed that autoimmune disease was only slightly increased risk of severity uh, in this meta-analysis. So again, it looked at many studies, so that makes this uh, information even more concrete. But it says the statistical difference was not significant at all. So basically saying that people with autoimmune diseases or if you got an autoimmune disease or started making antibodies for the first time, your symptoms related to COVID could have been zero, it could have been mild, could have been moderate, but for the most part, not severe. So it's not like someone had to be near death that that's the person that should be afraid if they got an autoimmune disease. No, 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 no. It could have been anybody. And that's what we're also seeing here at Nutrition Dynamic. So what I'm getting at, what does this all say? What's, what's the big picture? Currently in the United States, autoimmune disease is one of the most rapidly growing conditions. And now that majority of Americans got COVID-19 and you see the rate of growth with autoimmune disease, it leads to huge concern. I understand that 600,000 people died um, of COVID and I, I don't wanna discount that. That's serious. What I do wanna point out is that we may be in the beginning of, a, of the aftershock that's bigger than the tsunami being that Autoimmune diseases take years to mature. So you can start making antibodies and not feel it until it crosses a threshold. What I'm proposing for you and what the big concern is, is that now there could be millions of Americans who have now contracted or now are making antibodies to autoimmune diseases that will fully develop in the next three to five years and we see as clinicians and practitioners across the world, a whole new world of a high and intense amount of autoimmune diseases that ruin people's lives. And I wanna make people aware of it today. Now, I do wanna say this, that if you have had long-term symptoms from getting COVID-19, if you're still tired, if you're still not feeling well, I highly recommend you go to Nutrition Dynamic um, and request our autoimmune panel or go to your doctor and say, hey, I wanna get this checked. Or there are websites where you can just order an ANA, um, ESR and rheumatoid factor, which is RF. You can check those yourself and buy and pick the lab that you want. So there are multiple different options and uh, we will actually leave some of those uh, options in the message below. So you can check that out for yourself or go to your doctor, but we wanna make people aware that this is happening and you need to be aware of it for your family's health and yours. Thanks. So if you like the content that you saw here, please do me a big favor, show me some love and some support, hit the like and subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified immediately when I make my next drop.